All right, students, welcome back to Chapter 11, Managing Systems Implementation. Uh, we're talking about something that is incredibly near and dear to my heart because it is the vast majority of my day job, and that is quality assurance. I run two ISO 9001-2015 certified quality management systems, one at a corporate level and one at a contract level. So quality is a huge part of my life. But what is quality assurance? It is a outward sign that companies and people are, quite frankly, committed to quality, ensuring that the products we deliver are the absolute best they can be without any faults in them. The documentation that comes with it is incredibly thorough and that we stand by our product. In today's competitive environment, regardless of what sector you're in, Having a quality assurance system or a QMS or quality management system is incredibly important because it shows your commitment, but it also puts a lot of internal interlocks to ensure that the products you're delivering meet a very high standard. And there's different levels of maturity for quality systems. Uh, at the very beginning, it's there really isn't anything. Level one, we call it essentially uncontrolled. You might be manufacturing and you know, well, it's supposed to kind of look like this and these are the measurements and that's kind of where you're at, right? Um, we don't really have any processes in place. We really don't have a lot of repeatability. We're just kind of making something or we just don't even acknowledge that we have uh, quality issues in our products. When we get to level two, then we say that it's repeatable because we have uh, very defined procedures and we use those procedures. So again, think if we're assembling something. Anytime we're talking about uh, quality or even project management, it's very easy to talk about making things because that's something that's very tangible. If I gave you a procedure, a five-step procedure for making a wicket, that's very repeatable. You just follow those steps again and again. So we have defined a procedure and we're using it. Now we can always refine that more, right? When we get to level three. So we have all these procedures. We're going to keep refining them and get better and better to ensure that the product we're putting out again is held to a very high standard. At some point in time, as the company grows and we want to invest more money into our people and to our products, we realize that we need a quality system because having procedures in place is great, but it can be better. We can start to audit those procedures. We can start to randomly pull products on the assembly line to QA check them, quality assurance checks them to say that, hey, if, if you're making this widget and it's supposed to weigh a pound plus or minus, you know, two ounces, well, let's start checking that, making sure that we're meeting all of those defined requirements. And finally, when we get to level five, optimizing. It's so important when a company can learn from your mistakes and understand that you can always do better. The moment you, your team, or your company says, we, we have we have mastered this craft. We can't get any better. This is the best the system's ever going to be. That is when you start to fall. You always have to understand that we can always optimize. We can always make things better. So previously you heard me mention ISO 9001-2015. What is that? ISO is the International Organization for Standardization. Uh, basically, it's a large body that says certain things will be done this way and that's how the world's going to do it to ensure that we have repeatability accountability and everything else uh, 9001 2015 is a quality management system but there's different ones there's iso standards for pretty much everything you can ever think of iso 9003 2004 that is for developing and maintaining software uh, and just so you're aware the, the first part of the ISO number, that is the standard. So like ISO 9001, that's a, a QMS. ISO 9000, that's a lot of definitions that we use in quality systems. The 2004, the 2015, these are dates. That's when that system was uh, ratified, if you will. Um, every couple years they go into review and you might have new ones. So if you are in an ISO system, you always want to make sure you are certified or compliant to the most recent. Going hand in hand with quality systems is agile development. Agile is a um, 
development methodology that is based on quick and nimble development. This is um, this is a real buzzword in software development, and quite frankly, in leadership management in businesses. You know, agile was really developed for software, right? To make um, programming quicker, uh, programming better, and to not short step things, but we can do multiple things at once, right? So a lot of corporate C-suites have seen what we've done in software development, and they have turned around to try to make a better agile company. So we have extreme programming. We see this as XP. A lot of people think Windows XP. It's not extreme programming. So we can use pair programming. We have two programmers working together on the same task. This is the keyword on the same computer. All right. So one, I would be actually writing the program. You'd be watching over my shoulder, right? Um, it sounds a little annoying, right? Because somebody's over your shoulder. But if you have a really good pair, right? Two people who, one, get along, um, understand whatever that language is incredibly well, but also have different strengths and weaknesses. As I'm coding, you can be checking me above it, running those quality checks in your head and just kind of watching it. And then you could switch off too, right? So it prevents coding fatigue, um, depending on your comfort level or how much experience you have with coding. Um, sitting down writing large amounts of script can be um, tiring. It's, it's mentally and physically draining. So it's nice to have somebody else who you can hot swap immediately because they've been with you this whole time. They know exactly where you are. Um, we also have TDD, Test Driven Development. And this focuses on basically the end results from the beginning. We know this, uh, this software needs to be delivered on this date with these requirements. Boom, let's go. Let's hit it out. Um, and one nice thing about this is this prevents people from we call it straying from goals, right? Or that shiny object syndrome. Because if you don't really have a clear end result as you're developing a program, you might think of more features you want to add to it that can derail our development a little bit. So if we know, hey, the customer only wants X, Y, and Z, we're only going to deliver them X, Y, and Z. And we get the actual coding. This is where we turn program logic into specific instructions. And there are many, many different languages, and different languages can be used for very specific circumstances. Things you're going to see a lot, right? Visual Basic, Python, uh, and Java. More Python. Python is really kind of taken over. Um, we see a lot of need for Python coders, people proficient in Python. And getting back to my meat and potatoes, testing. We need to make sure that the program we deliver meets every single wicket that our customer wants. Every that it works from installation to using and to outputs. We can do this many, many ways. There's really no one set way of testing. Uh, we can do unit testing where we look at the entire system, but we do it in certain uh, programs or modules within it. And then we would do integration tests as each of those program modules work together. This is a really nice way to isolate issues, uh, but it can also mask some other issues in the system as a whole. Uh, we can also do integration testing and system testing. System testing sometimes takes place on site at um, at that client. Uh, we can also do system testing in-house uh, based on, hey, it's a Windows device running Windows 10. We can test this inside. Here you go. Uh, but a lot of times we're going to want to do system testing, if we can, um, on the customer's hardware at their site to make sure that there isn't any um, weird things going on with the way their network or their systems are configured. And I cannot stress the importance of documentation. Multiple reasons, right? Number one, uh, we need to make sure that when we deliver this to our customer, that they have enough documentation to run and do general maintenance on the system to make sure that it's functioning for them. Uh, two, if you, let's say you're a team leader and you have a rotating pool of developers and three years down the road, a system, you know, a system that was built is having issues, but all of those developers are gone. We need to know how that program works, right? Um, so we need to have program documentation. We need to have system documentation. I want to know how this thing works. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? Um, you know, how does it operate? 
That way, because if I don't know how the program works, I have a hard time fixing it. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means that there's going to be a lot of time spent going through code, learning how this works. Uh, and then the last two are really for the end user. I need to have good user documentation with very clear instructions written at a very low level so that way users who are using this system, if they have any issues, they can use built-in help tools or printed documentations or anything to do their own troubleshooting before it has to go to a higher echelon. Um, and anymore, a lot of this is provided online. You can have online help programs with forums, with wikis, uh, that way different users can help each other out. We see a lot of this, um, especially in the Apple community. You know, if you go on some of the Apple forums, there are very thorough, thought out um, walkthroughs and explanations using programs, hardware, software issues uh, that are just written by fellow users. These are not employees of Apple. They're not engineers. They're not contractors. Uh, they're just fellow users who have had this issue before and they want to help the community. So having online documentation can be really, really beneficial for that. All right, so that's going to wrap up this chapter. Uh, you guys are doing great work. Keep pushing on. If you have any questions, let me know.